It has been a fantastic week of professional wrestling. I don't want to get into WWE versus AEW. I just want to enjoy the sport and the entertainment for what it is and put my hands in the air and wiggle around like one of Bailey's inflatable buddies or whatever the hell they're called. I love the Raw Rumble, I love Raw after the Raw Rumble, and this AEW show was just like sitting down on a lazy boy and going, ah, oh, isn't it so relaxing to enjoy this madness? My name is Simon Miller, you are watching Up Culture Wrestling. Up Culture Wrestling is not what it's called. What Culture Wrestling? And just in case you have never seen these videos before, I go through wrestling and I give the good bits an up, I give the bad bits a down, and I do it using this. You just think, Puh, that's a poxy finger, that's a jabroni hand, but it's not. It's the finger of power. I'm in my early 30s. Let's up those downs for AEW Dynamite. And before we do get going, just another quick reminder, if you didn't see Ups and Downs for Raw, next week I am going to be away for Ups and Downs of Raw then, and I will be away for that week's episode of Dynamite, but I'll be back on the 8th of February for SmackDown, so everything will be okay, just taking some time to go and try and regrow my hair. Let's do it. We are building to John Moxley versus Chris Jericho for the AEW Championship at Revolution, and that was the focus at the start of the show. John Moxley was out wearing his eye patch, and he's now officially become Solid Snake. And boy, howdy, does he really, really, really hate the champion. Up. The point was, even though he has lost his eye, he is still going to whoop Jericho's ass, whoop the Inner Circle's ass, and take their most prized possession, which of course is the title. And the really cool thing that he did here is that when he was cutting his promo, he referenced some of the dastardly things Jericho had done in WWE. So he talked about Rey Mysterio's mask, he talked about that time he punched a woman in the face, and that of course was a reference to Shawn Michaels' his wife, which did kick off Chris Jericho versus Shawn Michaels, which many people say was the highlight of Chris Jericho's career. Jericho was never going to take this lying down, so he did enter the arena. And much like last week, all the fans started singing his entrance song. So I now think we can agree when it comes to Chris Jericho, he's just on this perch now. He's on a pedestal. And if we do decide to boo him, it's just because he wants us to boo him because he's a heel. So what I'm trying to say, I guess, is Chris Jericho equals legend. As we were in Moxley's home state, Jericho let us know that he had bumped into Mrs. Moxley backstage and that she looked absolutely ravishing. And while he did apologize for Moxley getting stabbed in the eye, he let her know it was John's fault. And I could completely understand that. I can't tell you the amount of times somebody has got a spike and stuck it into my retina and I've been laying there with blood pouring out my face going, well, this is clearly my fault. What a numpty I am. Moxie was having none of this and kept getting more and more enraged and then got doubly annoyed because Jericho said, look, dude, we can fight if you want. Although it won't be five on one because we went onto the streets of Ohio and we found five more people, a bunch of thugs. So if you're going to do this, it's going to be 10 on one. Because John Moxley is a crazy person, he went and fought them all. The best part was, before he did jump in there, John was all like, you're wrong in a circle because I'm from this town, I'm from this state, and therefore it's 10 against all of us. And you could see some fans in the crowd going, are we part of the angle? I don't really want to fight. Anyway, they had a big brawl before security broke it up and then Moxley legged it out of there because I think he realised, yeah, this ain't going to work very well for me. And it's just a very nice build to that pay-per-view where I do want to see this title match. And also, AEW rarely opens their shows with promos. It felt a bit raw-esque, but not in a bad way. I enjoyed the whole damn thing. Maybe it is time to change that world championship. The next segment that aired was hilarious too when you look at it in the context as it was presented. Because MJF and Wardlow were walking into a, a butchery, I guess. And in said butchery, you'll be surprised to find out, was the bunny, the blade, and of course, the butcher. Now, they were chopping meat. So I guess we should have taken their names literally and we're fools that we didn't. And then MJF passed an envelope over to the bunny and on it, it just said the Young Bucks. Now it was made very clear, in said envelope was a bunch of cash. So in short, MJF was paying this team to try and kill, or at least wound, Matt and Nick Jackson because they pushed him into a pool. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is called the definition of overreacting. It was very good though, but it was very well shot and it continues to justify the presence of the three Bs. However, it was a setup for the match that was going to come next, which was the Butcher and the Blade taking on the Young Bucks. And while it was great from an in-ring action point of view, I just couldn't take the finish. 
down. And the idea here was that it was pace and speed, so like Sonic, taking on power and brutishness. So I guess like Mario, that is not a fair comparison at all. And as it turned out, speed and pace and being super duper quick will win out because the Young Bucks hit the Meltzer driver and they got the one, two, three. But that means ever since these mercenaries arrived who do have a meat service on the side, they have just lost. And yeah, I'm gonna stand here right now with my damn face and I'm going to query that because they are officially rubbish so why would you hire them in the first place? And just think, if you are going to introduce a team like this, they at least have to get a couple of wins so we as fans can go, oh man, they are, well, again, a threat. But they're not a threat. They have lost, I can remember, two matches with these three and every time they just lose. And I know I'm being pedantic, but it just stood out like a sore thumb. I don't like having a sore thumb. It hurts. It goes boom, 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 and it throbs. What I do appreciate is that AEW had had some bumps in the road with this, but now they've gone in the opposite direction and they have polished it up. But unfortunately, it still means you have hurdles such as this. And I'm not saying that I wanted the Young Bucks to lose. I didn't. We had just booked ourselves into a corner. It was just obvious. You couldn't miss it. But Cena, what? I don't know. It's like that Hitman video game, right? Within that, everybody hires Agent 47 because he gets the job done. And before you say it in the comments, Simon, you look like Agent 47. Or Simon, you look like Johnny Sins. Or Simon, you look like that guy from Right Said Fred. Some people are just bald, all right? We're not all the same. Don't be offensive. The aftermath was far better though. Up. Mad that they had lost, the Butcher and the Blade started to beat other Young Bucks before Kenny Omega and Hangman Page were there to make the save. And Hangman continued his descent into gloriousness when he passed one of the Jacksons' beer, you know, hold my beer, got in the ring and gave the Blade or the Butcher one of the two, the Buck shot Lariat. He then left, took his beer and went to the back. This did mean that Matt, Nick and Kenny were celebrating in the ring, but as always, the Cowboy wanted to go and do cowboy ship instead. I cannot wait until he turns. It's going to be a wonderful day. Nyla Rose took on Big Swole after this. Couple of things. Firstly, I really would like less of these random matches that we always seem to get in the women's division. I know we tried some sorry stuff with the Nightmare Collective and that didn't work, but honestly, I swear, week in, week out, AEW just grabs two women and go, by the way, you gonna wrestle now. Secondly, I think this was being billed as a number one contender scrap, which I guess makes sense because Nyla Rose did win that number one contender match a few weeks ago, but it just came off as a little bit stilted. Outside of this, the match was fine and Rose won with the sit out powerbomb, but it's so hard to invest because I don't know what I'm gonna get in seven days. They may grab two other people and go, oh, by the way, now it's your turn. For example, where is Chris Statlander? I can only presume that she flew back to her home planet. AEW has proven that they constructed this stuff very well, but just do it for your women. So down. It was then Cody versus Kip Sabian, and if you had told me that this match was gonna have more nonsense in it than one of my videos, I wouldn't have believed you, but I would have been wrong. For some reason, AEW decided that madness should just ensue here, and I cannot tell a lie. Well, no, that's not true, I can watch. I have a full head of hair, but look, I cannot tell a lie. It was really, really entertaining. Up. The biggest hoo-hoo-ha-ha -ha came when Penelope Ford threw her shoe into the ring. And Arn Anderson was out there as Cody's coach. And he was so annoyed by this. He was so riled up. He got in the ring. He picked up the shoe. He lobbed it into the crowd. And then, I guess, the officials said the wrong thing to him because Arn Anderson pushed him and got ejected from the ring. Talk about anger management issues. Of course, that wasn't the finish because DQs don't exist within All Elite Wrestling. But then at the same time going on outside, Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford were gonna kiss, because I know if I was in the middle of the fight, I'd be like, really wanna kiss my girlfriend right now. And then quite hilariously, from the crowd, Joey Janela just appeared and he stuck his face between them, meaning they both kissed his cheeks. I can't help it, I did laugh. It was a big enough of a distraction to allow Cody to get back on top, and I think AEW were desperate to keep Kip Sabian strong because he did lose here, but not to one crossroads, not to two crossroads, but three crossroads. I thought maybe I'd fallen asleep, accidentally pressed rewind three times, and I kept waking up like, oh, 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 I had it. This was so unexpected, but as I did assess the carnage, I noticed a wry smile had appeared on my face, and that means I had a good time. And also, this gave a real fire to Cody, because it was like he was so pissed off, he was so mad at Kip Sabian, he was so mad at Penelope Ford, and he was so mad at MJF, he just wanted to kick someone's bum. That's what he did. Honestly, more people should do this. You hit one finish, you hit another one, because you're like, I'm gonna show you, damn it, I'm the man. And also, I am sorry too, you're gonna get all mad, but I am doubling down on what I said last week. This new Britt Baker character 
rocks. Everyone was so mean about her promo seven days ago, but I took it as like, she's a bit of an airhead idiot. She's like, oh man, I'm the best, I'm so sexy, because she's so lost in her own brain, and she did it even better on this episode of AEW is getting it up. It had so many good lines too because she told Tony Schiavone that he stinks because he's probably got gum disease. Says, don't call me Brit. My name is Dr. Baker. And Eva looked over at Jim Ross and said, Jim, you get paid a lot of money. Why don't you use all of that to learn the names on your damn roster? I mean, she was fucking shooting fires. Finished it all by saying that Cleveland finally has a Baker they can believe in. And that was taking aim at the Cleveland Browns quarterback, Baker Mayfield. And I am giving her a round of applause. This was like heel promo one-on-one. Who knew she had it in her? And there was more Hangman Page teases next. The Young Bucks and Kenny Omega were in the back. And Kenny Omega was like, look, guys, don't worry about everything that's happened because I have booked us a match for next week when it's going to be us four taking on the Butcher and the Blade and two mystery opponents that later on turned out to be Pentagon and Phoenix. But then Hangman did arrive and he was like, oh, Matt and Nick. I'm so upset that you haven't been able to win the tag titles. Look how cool my new nameplate is. And he made them special nameplates. He said, I'm sure one day you will have these belts. Hangman is just like a passive aggressive dick. Matt and Nick Jackson look devastated. Kenny Omega is trying to pay Peacemaker. He gets two thumbs up. SCU were then in the building and their gear was clearly a tribute to Kobe Bryant, which I thought was very nice. They were taking on Jack Evans and Hanhelico and it was all fine. Up. And look, before you say it, you're going to say, well, Simon, why do you like this? Because it was a random tag team match, and you would be right. But the difference is AEW has built a foundation for their tag team division, so you can get away with that. But it has just been randomized madness with the women's, and that's where the different lies. So I've answered your queries. And because everybody else will mention this, yes, there was a little bit of toing and froing towards the end of this. But I thought it did its job, and it did its job well. Eventually, SCU hit the SCU later on Han Helico. They get the pin, and the commentators hinted that soon, maybe they'll be back in the tag title picture. And there was a reason to have the former champs out there as well, because as soon as they had one, the Dark Order came on the big screen, and they said this. Christopher Daniels, the exalted one, whoever that may be, <coughs> Matt Hardy, whoever that may be, <coughs> Matt Hardy, you annoyed us when you turned down the Dark Order, so now we are going to take out your friends, and you won't know which one we're going after first, but you better keep your eye on it. So essentially, the Dark Order have told us that they are going to kill Scorpio Sky, and they are going to kill Kazarian. It was nice having you here, boys. If I were you, I would leave the company, change your names, and never come back. We then had the strangest pack promo I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, it was shot really, really well. The presentation was fantastic, but he was in his ring gear, outside on some steps and I'm pretty sure any passers-by would be like why is that Geordie guy yelling and coughing and why is he in some pants? He hates Kenny Omega, he hates John Moxley but he doubly hates the fact that Omega thinks he can have their match on his terms and he is going to turn that around when he goes and does something next week but honestly this was absolutely excellent and you should go and watch it if you have no intention on seeing anything else like the music the atmosphere the aura pax delivery somebody once said he couldn't cut promos well he should do more like this because it absolutely worked he is getting it up and he comes across like an absolute nut job main event was fun even though it lacked some of the serious stakes that other main events recently on dynamite have had but you can't do that all the time giving it up it was jericho and the proud and the powerful taking on darby allen and private party and it was just your usual six-man tag match the heels were in control in the while eventually darby allen got the hot tag he ran wild hit a coffin drop to jake Hauger on the outside and everybody cheered him like he was a ghostbuster because people like Ghostbusters. I really did like the finish though, because the Judas effect has come so far. After Cassidy had hit this really good move on the top rope and got a damn near two count on the champion, Jericho slammed him with the elbow, but I did it come out of nowhere, but it looked like it took the dude's head off. Obviously that got the one, two, three, and who knew? I knew, When I first saw that finishing move, I was like, well, that's a little bit lame. I was wrong, color me incorrect really growing on me. It's fantastic. The Inner Circle then jumped on their prey because they are just a bunch of dicks, including Sammy Hagar, taking Darby Allen's skateboard and ramming it into his throat. That genuinely looked like it hurt. And if we are, by the way, building to those two having a match at Revolution, I'm all right with it. When, of course, John Moxley was back out with a baseball bat to make the save. And if you were a fan of WCW, you couldn't help but think to yourself, he's basically Sting. I got no problem with that. Pirate Sting. He took out everyone with said weapon apart from Chris Jericho as these two stared off. It's just a really old school smart build. 
for your world title picture. Look, I'm conducting. That's how much I enjoyed it. Chris Jericho. And that was that. Dynamite went off the air. Was this the best show they've ever done? No. Was there some things that made you raise an eyebrow? Yes. But as always, is it just so easy to watch? You bet your ass. I love AEW Dynamite. And if SmackDown is good, it will seal off a brilliant week for professional wrestling. There's my overall arrow. Give it up. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about the show. Like, share, and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com. Read yourself some articles. Follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE. And watch more videos here on What Culture Wrestling. My name is Simon from What Culture. As I said at the start of the video, just as a little reminder, I will be away next week for just Raw and AEW Dynamite ups and downs. Turns out I will be doing SmackDown. And now you know it will be okay. I'll miss you. Hopefully, you'll miss me. But I will see you soon. And nothing else. I'll see you Saturday for this week's SmackDown. Please, for the love of everything, be good.